Welcome uh, to Massive Open Online Course uh, on Fluidization Engineering. Uh, today's uh, lecture uh, is on uh, calculation of gas pumping power consumption in fluidized bed. And what to learn in this lecture that uh, we learn here how to calculate the power consumption to pump the gas in the fluidized bed. Uh, the gas uh, is distributed through the uh, distributor in the fluidized bed. So, to uh, pass this gas to the distributor of course, uh, sufficient power is required uh, and then uh, this power how to calculate uh, against the uh, uh, resistance of the fluidized bed uh, 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 on this uh, gas consumption. So, uh, let us see uh, how to calculate uh, what should be the actually uh, uh, preamble of uh, this power consumption of the uh, blower. We will see that power consumption is a significant cost factor in any process using fluidized beds. Occasionally, we will see it can be so high that it uh, cancels the advantages of fluidization operation. Therefore, uh, roughly uh, estimation of the power uh, uh, which is required uh, for the distribution of gas through the distributor uh, in the early uh, design stages uh, before making a uh, detailed design of the uh, dis, uh, design of the uh, uh, fluidized bed or, uh, uh, or, or deciding to uh, uh, the pilot plant operation uh, of course, uh, this will be required. Now, since the distributor contribute a, a considerable function of pressure drop across a fluidized bed, it is uh, always uh, uh, important to be noted that uh, the power consumption of the blower that uh, drives the gas through the bed. So, uh, the power consumption mainly uh, uh, contributed by this uh, by this uh, 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 by this distributor through which this gas is consumed gas is distributed inside the bed of course other different parts of the uh, 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 of the fluidization design that uh, contribute uh, to the power consumption of the uh, uh, fluidization operation uh, in that case, uh, uh, the power consumption through the fluidized bed for the distribution gas is the main contributory part. So, we will here uh, will know how to calculate this power consumption uh, uh, of the uh, uh, compressor or blower uh, by which the gas is compressed to uh, uh, distributor uh, through which gas is distributed. Now, uh, power consumption of the blower, uh, let us see here how to calculate. In this case, you will see that uh, a stream of gas uh, which will be compressed uh, from an uh, initial pressure uh, to uh, a higher pressure. If you consider that initial pressure is P 1 uh, and the uh, higher pressure is P 2, then you then uh, then uh, then the gas is to be compressed from this uh, lower pressure of p1 to the higher pressure p2 uh, to pump uh, this gas through the uh, entire fluid bed in the fluidized bed then uh, uh, what should be the uh, difference of this uh, uh, pressure uh, that can be uh, equal to p2 minus p1 uh, P 2 minus P 1 here this equation. So, this uh, P 2 minus P 1 that is called the pressure difference that means, uh, the pressure uh, of higher to lower what should be the difference that will be equals to uh, the what should be the pressure difference of the bed uh, uh, and what should be the pressure uh, difference or pressure drop in the uh, distributor and is there any other uh, pressure drop 
contributed by other uh, uh, means like uh, cyclones or uh, filters in the fluidized bed. So, summation of this uh, bed pressure, uh, distributor pressure uh, and uh, the pressure drop uh, of uh, different uh, uh, mechanical uh, means uh, uh, for the contribution of this total uh, uh, pressure difference, uh, uh, we have to then calculate the summation of these three or uh, if uh, any other pressure contribution to uh, um, equi uh, valence uh, uh, for the pressure uh, from lower pressure to the higher pressure. So, uh, as per thermodynamics uh, then for adiabatic reversible operations with uh, negligible kinetic and potential energy effects, uh, uh, you can calculate this ideal shaft works to compress uh, each kilogram of gas uh, from this uh, lower pressure to the higher pressure. Uh, to pump uh, it uh, or the pump this gas through the entire fluidic bed system fluid bed system uh, is given by uh, this uh, uh, this will be your uh, notation about this uh, shaft work this will be of course this will be ideal uh, shaft work which will be the integration of this uh, uh, pressure per unit uh, uh, mass of the gas uh, from this uh, 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 initial pressure to this higher pressure uh, P 2. So, here uh, of course, this pressure will be negligible uh, compared to this, ki uh, 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 this uh, kinetic and potential energy uh, effects will be negligible compared to this uh, shaft work here. So, based on this we will be able to calculate what should be the, uh, what should be the uh, work done uh, by this compressor for compressing this uh, gas from pressure P 1 to P 2. Now, if we consider that uh, this is the ideal gas which is being com uh, compressed from this lower pressure to the higher pressure and uh, if it is considered that ideal gas behavior is there, then you can uh, say uh, this equation will be followed that this P V is equal to N R T. So, the ideal pumping requirement then uh, becomes uh, after substitution of this uh, p value here in this equation and then what should be the dp and finally, we can uh, get this equation of this shaft work ideal shaft work as this. This is a function of this uh, that uh, gamma and uh, what is that uh, v and uh, the pressure. So, this v is nothing but the uh, volume per unit uh, uh, mass of the gases. So, here so W s uh, ideal that is called uh, shaft work rate of shaft work and ideal condition it will be gamma my 1 uh, gamma minus 1 into P 1 V 1 into P 2 by P 1 to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma minus 1 or you can say this will be equal to gamma by gamma minus 1 into P 2 into V 2 uh, into 1 minus P 1 by P 2 to the power gamma minus 1. Uh, by gamma. So, in this case B is the volumetric flow rate of gas in meter cube per uh, second. So, here uh, in this case gamma, gamma is nothing but the ratio of, uh, 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 ratio of uh, uh, heat capacity uh, uh, of gas at constant pressure and uh, constant uh, volume. So, this gamma is uh, defined as this which is denoted by this expression, this gamma is equal to C p z by C v z. So, from this equation you can ideally calculate what should be the shaft work done whenever pumping of this gas through this distributor and distributed into the uh, bed uh, from this lower pressure to the higher pressure. Now, adiabatic reversible compression of the gas. Uh, uh, from this uh, lower pressure P 1 to the higher pressure that may cause an increase in uh, temperature uh, because of this uh, 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 pressure difference. Now, uh, from thermodynamics point of view uh, of course, you uh, one can calculate uh, the temperature at P 2 as uh, what should be the P 2 uh, T 2 uh, as this P 2 that means, if we 
uh, compress this gas from this lower pressure to higher pressure at that higher pressure what should be the temperature change and then uh, that change of temperature at then uh, that final temperature at this P 2 will be equal to T 2 that can be uh, uh, equals to uh, uh, T 1 into P 2 by P 1 to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma. So, from this equation you will be able to calculate what should be the temperature at this uh, uh, temp at this pressure of P 2. Uh, this gamma is the ratio uh, of specific heats of gas is equal to 1.67 uh, for monoatomic gases and 1.40 uh, for diatomic gas and if it is triatomic gas then you have to consider this gamma value as 1.33. However, for real operations of course, you will see that uh, uh, there will be a frictional losses and then frictional losses um, uh, will be converted to this uh, heat energy. Now, this actual shaft work required uh, always will be greater than the uh, ideal case. So, of course, the actual and practical condition you will see the actual shaft work will be required to compress this gas. Uh, is uh, greater than this ideal uh, shaft work. Now, for real operation then or practical operations then uh, with its uh, frictional losses you can say the actual shaft work can be represented by this uh, uh, W s actual that will be equal to W s ideal divided by eta. Eta is the efficiency of the compressor which is roughly given by this eta will be equal to 0 0.552 0.75 that means efficiency 55 percent to 75 percent for turbo blower and uh, it will be uh, 60 percent to 80 percent if it is uh, uh, rotors blower and this efficiency will be 80 percent to 90 percent if uh, an axial blower or a two stage reciprocating compressor is used to compress the gas uh, from this lower pressure to the higher pressure uh, through this distributor inside the fluidized bed. Now, you can get more information of course, from this books of handbook of fluidization and uh, uh, fluid particle systems of, uh, uh, that is edited by Young. So, you can get more information on this. And then actual temperature of the gas leaving a well insulated uh, adiabatic uh, but not 100 percent efficient compressor uh, uh, is then uh, calculated by this T 2 actual will be equal to T 1 plus uh, T 1 by eta into P 2 by P 1 to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma minus 1. So, what should be the actual temperature at its higher pressure if you are considering that there will be a frictional losses during the operation of the compression from this lower pressure to the higher pressure. Now, in this case you will see this T 2 of course, you will see the function of this uh, T 1 of course, uh, and also this pressure at higher pressure. If suppose pressure is uh, uh, this higher then uh, this uh, it will be uh, of course, is greater than uh, 1 and uh, this temperature the greater than then T 1. Uh, that is why the temperature is uh, uh, higher than the ideal case here. So, this uh, eta will give you the efficiency of the compressor from which you can calculate what will be the actual temperature. Now, let us see one example that how to calculate this fresh compressor power to uh, uh, to to calculate uh, 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 to calculate uh, the uh, power of gas distribution uh, uh, into the uh, plenum of the fluidized bed system uh, 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 by this compressor by compressor or uh, or any uh, blower also uh, calculate how to calculate the temperature rise due to the uh, heat of compression here now let us see that system parameters are uh, given as here if suppose uh, grid distributor pressure is uh, here uh, this uh, 6 kilo Pascal. That means, here some distributor like grid type distributor is used to 
uh, uh, distribute the gas um, into the fluidized bed. And uh, bed pressure uh, is uh, 15 kilo uh, Pascal, whereas this cyclone filters and others uh, uh, pressure drop is given as 12 kPa and, uh, and the exit of filters it is given as uh, this 350 kPa and gas enters the compressor at T 1 uh, is equal to 20 degree centigrade and uh, initial pressure at 101 kPa and uh, the volumetric flow rate of the fluid uh, is uh, 10 meter cube per second. The efficiency of the compressor uh, is uh, considered as 85 percent and the ratio of the specific uh, heat uh, ratio is 1.4. So, with these uh, 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 conditions uh, how to calculate the compressor power to pass this reactant gas into the plane arm of the fluidized bed system. Let us see here this solution what is this? You have to calculate first what should be the uh, power, what should be the pressure uh, that is uh, final pressure as P 2. Then final pressure P 2 will be equal to what should be the P exit pressure, what will be the pressure contribution by the cyclones and filters, what should be the bed pressure drop and what should be the uh, a distributor pressure drop which is as uh, used as grid here. Now, in this case P exit pressure is given 350 whereas P cyclones and filters it is given 12 kPa and the bed pressure it is given as 15 kPa whereas this grid pressure drop is of uh, 6 uh, kPa. So, now in this case this then total exit pressure total total uh, uh, pressure uh, that is our final pressure will be the summation of this uh, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 of uh, uh, pressure contribution and it is coming 388 kilo Pascal. Now, next part that you have to determine then what should be the ideal power consumption uh, uh, which is required uh, to distribute the gas through this uh, grid distributor. Now, uh, as per this uh, uh, formula of this uh, uh, shaft work uh, uh, for at ideal condition that is gamma by gamma minus 1 uh, into P 1 into Q 1 uh, into uh, P 2 by P 1 to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma minus 1. So, in this case uh, gamma is given as 1.4. So, 1.4 by 1.4 minus 1 into P 1 is given as 101 kilo Pascal and then uh, Q 1 is given 10 meter cube per second and after the substitution of this P 2 as 383 and P 1 as 101 to the power this gamma value if you substitute and finally, if you calculate it you will get this ideal uh, shaft work as 1638 kilo watt. Then, uh, what should be then uh, the actual power consumption if uh, the uh, uh, if the compressor or blower efficiency is 85 percent then shaft work actual shaft work will be equal to W s i t l by eta it is the efficiency of the compressor then it will be 1638 divided by 0.85 then it is final is coming 1927 kilowatt or you can express as 2587 horsepower. Now, what should be the then temperature rise the T 2 uh, because of this uh, compression of gas from this P 1 uh, uh, P 1 that is 101 kilo Pascal to uh, this uh, P 2 that is 388 kilo Pascal then you will get uh, this T 2 from this equation here. So, this T 2 will be equal to T 1 plus T 1 by uh, eta uh, 1 into uh, P 2 by P 1 to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma minus 1. So, from this if you substitute this T 1 value T 1 is given you here that initial temperature is 293 and uh, this 293 divided by 0.85 that is the efficiency of the compressor and then P 2 is 383 and P 1 is 101 and substitute this gamma value. Finally, 
you will get it is coming 453 uh, or 180 degree centigrade. So, in this way you can calculate what should be the uh, uh, temperature rise uh, 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 during this compression okay, of this gas from this uh, lower pressure to the higher pressure. So, we are getting here T 2 as 453 whereas, T 1 is whereas, T 1 whereas, T 1 is uh, is given to you 293 uh, k and uh, T 2 now we are getting as 453 uh, k. So, temperature increase increase delta uh, T uh, increased 453 uh, minus 293 that will be equal to uh, that will be equal to uh, 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 60 uh, uh, that is here uh, you can say here 160 k of, uh, by this uh, uh, increase of uh, by this compression of this uh, gas from uh, lower pressure of uh, that is 101 kilo Pascal to 383 kilo Pascal. Now, let us uh, see another example if uh, if we use uh, the uh, if we use the uh, distributor in such a way that it is the pressure drop is uh, uh, some value and uh, if we uh, if we distribute the gas uh, in two locations or if we bypass this gas uh, uh, in such way different condition then what should be the power consumption is there any uh, uh, benefit of uh, this bypassing of gas uh, to distribute the gas into the uh, fluidized bed whether it will be beneficial or not let us see some one example whether this uh, bypassing of gas is uh, uh, useful or not or is there any uh, reduction of power consumption or not. Let us see uh, uh, these things uh, with this example. Now, calculate the compressor power requirement to run an atmospheric fluidized bed coal combustor under the following condition. Condition 1 is that distributor pressure will be uh, 3 kPa, another condition distributor pressure will be 10 kPa and uh, third condition that if it is uh, uh, the condition like that 50 percent of the required air that will be bypassed, uh, uh, bypassed uh, to the uh, bed and is introduced into the uh, freeboard of the fluidized bed to run uh, uh, it and uh, also uh, because of this uh, you will see some uh, volatile gases uh, will be burned in the fluidized bed and released in the bed by the coal. Now, at this condition you have to take distributor pressure as this initial condition whatever it is the 3 kp 3 kpa. Now, uh, you have to consider that that gas is entered uh, initially at 101 kilo Pascal and initial temperature uh, uh, is 20 degree centigrade and the gamma value that is ratio of specific heat capacity. Uh, it is uh, uh, a pressure constant at constant pressure and constant volume as uh, 1.4 and across the bed uh, the bed pressure uh, it will be is equal to 10 kPa and uh, uh, at the bed exit that 103 kPa it will be considered. Now, uh, coal is supplied into the bed at a rate of 8 tons per hour and uh, gross heating value is 25 uh, uh, mega joule per kg, air at saturated conditions needed at 10 uh, uh, normal meter cube per kg at 15 percent excess and efficiency of the compressor is given 75 percent of power plant uh, it is uh, 36 percent. Let us see the solution here it is given that initial pressure is 101 uh, kilo Pascal and uh, this uh, P 3 the bed it is given uh, this P 3 here in this figure you will see P 3 here at this condition this 103 and uh, P 1 it is not there, but uh, soft work you have to calculate and P 0 is 101 kilo Pascal what is the V 0 what is the T 0 it is not given. Let us see here what should be the V 0 that is volumetric flow rate of the gas here. Uh, uh, it is seen that that uh, 
it is given that uh, the uh, 800 uh, kg or 8 ton per hour uh, 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 8 ton per hour gross uh, feed rate is the uh, coal feed rate is 8 uh, tons per hour and uh, air at saturated conditions needed this uh, 10 uh, normal meter cube per kg of coal. So, in this case uh, uh, air is required 10 meter cube per kg of coal, but whereas this kg is supplied as 8 tons that is 8000 kg per hour and then if you multiply it. Uh, uh, by 10, then you will get this uh, uh, how uh, uh, what will be the volume of gas uh, per hour to be supplied. And then at this condition of this uh, 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 that is uh, here at this uh, uh, T 0 condition that is at the initial condition, what should be the volume of the gas at this temperature of 20 degree centigrade, then you will get this, then it will be uh, this meter cube per hour. And again, if you divide by this 3600 second you will get ultimately meter cube per second then it is coming 23.85 meter cube per second. Now, uh, okay, this is your uh, initial uh, 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 gas uh, supplied at the initial condition uh, to this fluidized bed. Now, uh, what should be then uh, shaft work for this? Now, if you substitute all the values in this uh, equation of the shaft work in ideal condition, then you will see that it will be your gamma by gamma minus 1 into this P 1 into uh, this uh, volume V 1 that is 23.85 meter cube per second into P 2 by P 1. P 2 here it is coming 116, 116 how it is calculated here P 2 is nothing but here. Uh, this P 103 plus 10, 103 what 103? This is nothing but here what should be the P 3 and this. Now, according to this here C, this will be your P 3, uh, this is P 3 then what should be that P 2 and P 1, P 2 and P 1, P 2 is nothing but 103 plus 10, 10 is what? This is your distributor pressure 10, then P 2 plus uh, then uh, P 2 is equal to P 3 plus uh, 10 that will be equal to 113 uh, and then P 1 is equal to 113 uh, plus 3 that will be equal to 116. How it is coming 3 here? See uh, 3 is nothing but 3 capital distributor pressure as 3. So, distributor pressure as 3. So, P 1 P 1 plus 3 that will be uh, P 1 will be equal to then this P 1 this P 1 how it will be this P 1 P 1 how to calculate this P 1. P 1 uh, is nothing but uh, this uh, 113 that means P 2 uh, plus 3, P 2 plus 3. Why? Because this P 2 minus P 1, P 2 minus P 1 that will be equal to uh, delta P d distributor pressure drop. Then P 2 will be equal to then P 2 is equal to P 1 plus delta P d. So, P 1 is given to you that P 1 is uh, uh, P 1 is given to you P 1 is nothing but uh, 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 P 1 what is that P 1 minus P 2 is equal to P 1 minus P 2 then uh, it will be equal to uh, uh, it will be P 1 P 1 minus P 2 is equal to delta P d and then here uh, P 2 is given to you that is 113 uh, plus 10 then it will be equal to 113 this is 1 1 uh, minus 113 uh, minus 113 uh, that will be equal to uh, that will be equal to uh, minus uh, minus uh, p 1 plus delta p d 3. So, ultimate p 1 will be equal to uh, p 1 will be equal to 116 k p a. So, in this way we we know that what should be the p0 what should be the p3 p3 is nothing but what here in this case it is the atmospheric pressure atmospheric pressure p3 that is uh, 101 plus 2 here and uh, this is 103 p3 and uh, then p3 will be equal to 101 plus 2 that will be equal to 103 103 why it is coming like that this p3 is given to you 
actually this P 3 uh, is uh, 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 this nothing but P 0 plus uh, P 0 P 0 minus uh, P 2 minus P 3 is equal to 2 here. So, this will be given as 1 0 3. So, P 2 will be is equal to what 1 0 3 plus 10, 10 is what 10 is nothing but the speed uh, distributor pressure and P 1 is equal to this. So, finally, we are getting the sub pressure as 455 kilo watt. Now, if we consider that B condition where delta P d is equal to 10 k P a, the uh, this represents a distributor plate with excessive pressure drop since delta P d is equal to delta P b here, then evaluating pressures gives as P 0 is equal to 1 0, P 0 is equal to 1 0 1 and uh, P uh, is equal to 1 0 3 and uh, here this P 3 and P 2 that will be is equal to uh, 113 and P is equal to 123, 123 kPa. And following the same procedure as in part A, then we find this uh, actual shaft work will be equal to 651 kilowatt or 873 HP. Uh, Thus, the power requirement increases by almost 200 kilowatt if the distributor pressure is uh, increased uh, from this 3 kPa to the 10 kPa. Now, in the third condition for 5 bypass into the free board of 50 percent of the air and uh, distributor pressure is 3 kPa, then we have no change in pressure drops from part A. So, in that case P 0 will be equal to 101 and P 3 is equal to 103, P 2 is equal to 113 and P 1 is equal to 116 and then uh, V s will be equal to what? Since here very interesting that this, uh, this uh, uh, whole amount of gas is not supplied from this uh, compressor and uh, whereas, this uh, 50 percent of this uh, gas is uh, bypassed and it is uh, uh, and it is first this compressor here in this uh, freeboard region. So, uh, uh, what should be then uh, V s for this compressor here it should be of course, uh, uh, half of this total amount of gas which is being compressed. So, for the primary air from part A we can say that this uh, actual shaft work will be is equal to half of that actual uh, shaft work which is, which is obtained as per that equation in initial condition that is uh, uh, this is uh, in part A then that is 455 divided by 2 this will be equal to 227.5 kilo watt. So, by this equation you will be able to calculate what should be the end, what should be the what should be the uh, power consumption if we, uh, uh, if we if we if we bypass this only then 50 percent of this uh, uh, air uh, will pass through this compressor remaining 50 percent again it will be compressed through this compressor another compressor is this. Now, if we use this compressor to uh, compress this 50 percent of air uh, within this uh, operating condition of initial pressure of 101 and uh, this volumetric flow rate of this gas as uh, half of this initial uh, volumetric flow rate of the uh, gas or air then uh, what should be that. So, for the air bypassed into the free board we need another blower of course, our compressor its blower requirement is again given by this again the same equation to be used to calculate the actual shaft work as this. So, it is coming here uh, of course, it is a function of pressure this is initial pressure this this pressure here it will be 103 because this uh, at this region the uh, atmospheric pressure is 103 kilo Pascal here. So, based on this, this uh, actual shaft work will be equal to 31.6 uh, kilo watt. So, the total power requirement for the two blowers will be the summation of this uh, two uh, 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 work like this here uh, initially it was 227.5 and the, uh, for the bypass gas it is 31.6. So, total 259 kilo watt. So, this design gives at least C 43 percent almost 43 percent savings in power pumping power over the design of part A. So, what we observe that if we bypass some amount of gas here we can get the benefit of the power consumption if we 
uh, by if we if we bypass then of course, the lowering the power consumption as per this example. Of course, some other operating condition to be designed or uh, to be kept in such a way that this power consumption um, will be less compared to this. So, according to this problem we are getting at least 43 percent power saving uh, uh, by uh, bypassing 50 percent of the gas to the uh, another blower and uh, supply to the uh, free board of this fluidized bed operation. Now, if we uh, do another exercise problem here you can get the same way. Now, if pressure drop across the gas distributor is 6 kPa and what should be the then power consumption if pressure drop across the gas distributor be doubled without changing delta P uh, which show uh, that power consumption will increase 17.98 percent. If 30 percent of the uh, required air bypass the bed and air introduced into the FIBO to burn the volatile gases released in the bed uh, by the biomass in this case delta P and delta V are same as A. So, at this operating condition uh, of this uh, initial pressure of this and T 0 is this um, then uh, uh, what should be the power consumption uh, if the compressor power compressor efficiency is 75 percent and it is seen that uh, the same way for the calculation it is seen that the power consumption will be uh, in the initial case it will be 882.04 whereas, this power uh, saving will be 17.98 percent if uh, the pressure drop across the gas distributor is doubled without changing uh, bed pressure there. And uh, of course, uh, if 30 percent of the uh, uh, gas if it is bypass uh, the bed and is introduced into the free board uh, then you will see that the, the power consumption will be 655.72 here. So, almost 17.98 percent will be power saving here. So, uh, from this lecture what we uh, uh, what we uh, observe that we can calculate the uh, power consumption uh, uh, from the uh, thermodynamic equation uh, uh, and what should be the actual uh, shaft work and what should be the ideal shaft work uh, to compress the gas from this lower pressure to the higher pressure. And also we can see if the gas is uh, bypassed and compress it to the uh, uh, distributor then we can of course, uh, uh, save some uh, power during the operation. And for this it is to be noted that uh, of course, you have to uh, uh, consider the other pressure drop is there any uh, 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 mechanical uh, device is used to uh, compress or any other operation if it is attached like any other uh, uh, heat energy or any other uh, energy is uh, uh, required to uh, the uh, operation of uh, the fluidized bed and at what should be the total energy required for that that you have to calculate. Here in this case only we are considering that what would be the compressing uh, power is required to distribute the gas inside the because this part is actually main contributory part for the fluidization operation. So, uh, uh, this is very important uh, to know and uh, we have seen that several other parts also will be contributing this uh, distributor pressure and uh, which will make you the consumption uh, uh, estimation uh, for this uh, uh, fluidization operation. In the next lecture we will uh, uh, try to uh, uh, discuss something about uh, other type of distributor special type of uh, distributor like of uh, uh, other type of fluidized bed like uh, bubbling fluidized bed what would be the other component of the uh, uh, bubbling fluidized bed and also uh, what should be the uh, bubble characteristics in the bubbling fluidized bed we will be discussing in the next lecture. And for this, uh, this gas distributor you please uh, follow the following books for more reading here Cooney and Levensfield fluidization engineering and young that handbook of fluidization and fluid particle system. So, uh, that is for all today's lecture. Thank you.